Hi everyone, welcome to Tiki with Ray Live. Thanks for coming out to Endless Summer number two. Dos. And are you, are you all having a good time out there tonight? Yeah. Good, good, good. So today I'm going to be doing something that I've been wanting to do for a long, long time, and is to have a roundtable discussion about home tiki bar builds, inspiration, why it started, and um, all three of you have a home tiki bar. Well, you used to have three, but now you're gonna have one big one. I live in a cardboard box now, but we're working on it. <laughs> so, um, yes, I, I, yes, we are. We are now in a cardboard box, but we are working on getting our next uh, tiki bar. Yeah. So, to introduce everyone that's in this panel, this is Stephen Current. Tell them, tell them the name of your bar and, and where you're at. Uh, the Rocking Jellyfish Lounge in Gate Harbor, Washington. Me? Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, the Minahuni Terrace here on Camino Island, Washington. <laughs> Waters Tiki ha Waters House of Tiki right here. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere in Oregon. Yes. Oh. So so the interesting thing about all three of your home tiki bars is that they're all definitely a lot different and um, there's a lot of different themes going on that are pretty unique to each one. So I'm going to ask the the most obvious question and we'll go down the line. Steven, what made you decide to build a tiki bar what made me decide oh by the way um given the advanced preparation and work that went into this last week ray and i are talking and ray says i'm doing this panel and i go great great idea and yeah i've got uh dawn lined up and i go oh that's great and uh of course we have to have grant we're at his uh, beautiful place and i go oh that's great so they asked me and then he goes man. and of course, oh, you're in it too, and I go. About this the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I go. Thanks for the heads up, and he goes, "That was the heads up." So here I am. The um, so uh, your question was what inspired, what inspired me? you to build a home tiki bar? Um, I wasn't inspired to build a tiki bar at first. Uh, five years ago, Heidi and I bought a home in Gig Harbor, yeah. and it had a, a built-in bar in it. Um, and we were uh, renovating the whole house, a mid-century modern house, and I wanted a mid-century modern bar to go into it. So you had no plans on making like an actual tiki bar originally? No, not at first. Okay. Not at all. Uh, but then what happened was I realized that uh, Heidi and I had a few amazing shag prints. We had a few tiki mugs. We... Um, had some other mid-century modern tiki bric-a-brac, and suddenly we decided uh, to, I decided to go to TikiCon and get some inspiration. Just, and, just a little bit of inspiration. Uh, well, a little bit of inspiration, so I, I went to the home bar tour, and I walked into, now my good friend, David Gumbali's uh, bar. and the, I The I, Vancouver Lanai. And I took one look at it, and I go, to myself, holy fuck, I'm never gonna match something of this quality. I mean, I, I was ready to give up right then. My dreams of a tiki bar were extinguished because of the quality of, uh, and the environment of his place. But nevertheless, I persevered um, and I took the mid-century modern and um, what I, when it, one of the things that inspired me was um, uh, just art galleries and art and as a way to display uh, art as well as well as tiki mugs and I took that as an inspiration and went with my own version of tiki and it's low bra art and just so you all know Steven really likes monkeys wearing fezzes so we have a so I have, if you want to get him something for his birthday that's what a you monkey? do I have a saying I have a saying I, I made up many years ago when Heidi and I lived in Los Angeles uh, which is the the theme of our tiki bar Nothing says class like a monkey with fez. So Grant, yes, this wasn't a tiki bar at first. No, it wasn't, Ray. This on? Yeah, okay. yeah. You got to talk oh, into. Hey. Yeah, how no, it wor how this no. works is you talk into the microphone. I don't have my ear. And then people in. can hear. Okay. I can't hear. Uh, no, this was. Um, I designed and built the shop here, and this space is big but it's not wasn't planned to be well, it was planned to be a bar from the beginning but it's the size is predicated by below because that's where we keep the boat and the fifth wheel so the shop's just big and this became this footprint um 
but we were, I've had classic cars. I like classic cars. We have the 59 Cadillac. So we were kind of liking the mid-century thing, but this was going to become a pirate bar more than anything else. And the original plans were to do sails across the ceiling and ship rigging and do the whole man cave slash pirate sports bar type thing. And then went to Disneyland and saw Trader Sam's and I was like, Oh, holy, just, right? And uh, the whole tiki mid-century combination was all just love, love, love. And I was like, I can mix my tiki in with my pirate. And so I got hints of pirate mixed in with my tiki. And and this is the way. Don, how did did, did you go from making, no, no, one tiki bar isn't good enough for me. I need to build three. My wife said that I needed to do whatever she said to do. No, we uh, we went to a. Well, that, no, that's not that's not an untruth, though. I mean, no, it is not an untruth. She's holding up signs telling you what to say. Oh, now. she is. Okay, you got the sign upside down. Flip it around. Yes, I love my wife. We've been married 32 years. Thank you very much. And that's true. So our kids uh, are, are in their 30s, and our daughter told my wife, you need to find your own friends. Oh. And at that point, my wife, she's like, I've been kind of looking at this Tiki thing, and we, we looked at TikiCon, you know, the year before, and then next thing you know, she bought us tickets. We're going to TikiCon. I'm like, what is TikiCon? She goes, just shut up. Get off work and go. <laughs> So, and I, I'm pretty sure that's probably what she said too. Oh, uh, she it. did. And so we went to TikiCon, and I'm wandering around looking at all these 45 plus people, going, "Who are they, and what is going on with all the Tiki shirts?" But it it was really cool, and we kind of got you know fully inspired. So then the next year we went to TikiCon, and our first artifact is she showed up. I, I had gone up to the room to refill my Crown and Coke because that's my tiki drink of choice. And I come down and she had this 60s toilet seat it's that true. had sea fish in it. And she goes, yes. look what I bought. And I'm like, oh, that's had a lot of asses on it. That, to- and, that toilet seat's amazing. Though. Oh, yeah. And she was so excited about it. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Anyways, we went home, and you know we had just moved into a, uh, a mid mid century modern home, and I kind of looked at it, and I'm like, okay, put nothing in this den, and I wouldn't let her move anything into the den because I had an idea, kind of what we were wanting to do, and at that point, it started, <laughs> and she kind of went on a hunt which now has turned into a full-on situation. (laughs) And people have have set up for years and years building their tiki empire. And I don't know if she's got another husband or somebody else producing money. (laughs) But stuff keeps coming into the house. And I thought, okay, let's do this. And uh, through a couple of really amazing opportunities we were able to start you know our uh, our adventure with each thing that we put in has a story and that's where we started with our original bar and i don't want to take up all the time but <laughs> too late yeah i mean <laughs> oh, no, we, the, and the thing is is he's not he's not lying because that toilet seat Hung up in the headhunters headhunters lounge, right where that, you sit, yes. right above your head. Yes, that 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 toilet seat was the main piece. I turned it into a lamp, and then yeah. built a bar from there, and kind of created. And the main thing on for me for tiki bars is everybody has their own style, and everybody on this panel right here has their own style and how they do it, which is amazing. Our style is like full-on layers of crap. Just keep putting it on the wall. And as you get better, take the crap off. The, the clown tiki comes off. And clown tiki has a place in every bar. But then as you get better and better, you kind of move that to your friends that want to get into it. Yes. And you just kind of go down, you know, and, and move it and move it and move it. 
Real quick, how we ended up with three bars is I built my bar, I was totally good. And I don't drink much, but... <laughs> she had so much stuff in the garage, I'm like, oh, okay, we got a problem. So in the house, there was a full pool table room downstairs. And I'm like, okay, we're going to create, this is going to be your bar. And so I made her full, you know, Hawaiiana. It Hula was all... Hideaway. What's that? The Hula Hideaway. The Hula Hideaway was her set up, and it was very specific. My bar would be like if you were a pirate and just pillaging and grabbing crap throughout the, throughout the world and just plastering it on the walls. Hers was very specific. She says, this can't go down here. I'm like, well, that's fine. You can put it up in my trash bin because my bar looks awesome. So we built her bar downstairs, and it, it was amazing. I did all the work. Myself and her and her father, my father-in-law. Oh, awesome. Not at all. Anyways, we built it. <laughs> the truth is coming out. Oh, it is. I did put a couple staples in his hand by accident. <laughs> so we built that bar. So we had it all done up. And then, okay, we're great. Having a good time. And I go out to the garage and I'm like, what is all this stuff in the garage? She kept buying, and I didn't know, and she was hiding it in the garage. <laughs> Hence, we had an extra space in the house, and that was called the leftover lounge. Yes, it was. <laughs> and we put all that stuff in the, the third bar, and then that's how we ended up you know, with that setup. Well, here's a good question, and you, you know, like not talking about toilet seats. But um, or some beaver bottle. or yeah. beaver, BBH. But sometimes with um, like with a tiki bar, there's like what what I'd like to call like an anchor, a thing that an inspiration that starts the whole thing. So Stephen, would you say that there was an anchor, or say hypothetically your toilet seat that would be the inspiration for your tiki bar? Oh, that's a great way to put it. What is your toilet seat? What is Stephen? my toilet seat? Oh, I don't have it. So the funny, but you do have a rock. You have a rocking chair though. Well, we have rocking chair. No, that the real anchor was or the. Well, inspiration slash anchor were two shag prints, the incredible bartender and uh, death takes a holiday, which uh, we had had for many years. Uh, and there was the 2001, both of those series of prints of shag, which I consider uh, shag puts out great stuff. Don't get me wrong, but peak shag and our favorite. Uh, and both of us have those overt tiki themes. One of them has the, um, uh, you know, the, the very 60s. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. model and we were going for mid-century modern our home was built in the 60s we have now 60s world fair glasses on the bulletin board we have a JFK happy birthday flyer that my uh, late aunt gifted to me because she was there the Marilyn Monroe happy birthday Mr. President with pictures of the three M's um, so we have Marilyn Monroe and then Heidi's dad with Jane Mansfield and Heidi's Jane, uh, dad with Mamie Van, Van Doren, Doren. So my father-in-law got around. Uh, so um, so the shag uh, brought in the tiki, brought in the mid-century modern, and um, really helped anchor the bar. So not as uh, not quite a toilet seat, but it works for us. Yeah, and what about you, Grant? Would you say there's like one thing that you got that you like? Okay, I'm gonna that, that's gonna that's gonna be the inspiration, the start of this tiki bar. No. <laughs> I don't know. You're talking to Stephen there about anchor things. I don't know if I have an anchor. It's interesting when you watch people come in and some people see the marlin and yeah. they're like, oh my God, marlin, yeah. right? And there's different things around the room that draw different people's eyes, but I don't know if I have an anchor. Like when we were designing this and kind of finally said we're going to do this as a tiki room and we're setting things. For us, for me and Tina, the, the pool table was built by Tina's uncles. And, oh, okay. And there's like 32 of them ever built by the family. And her dad wouldn't sell it to me, wouldn't give it to us. He's like, I'm not dead yet. You can't have it. And I had to kind of work out a deal where I had to buy him a new pool table for his house so I could get this pool table here. But it's like one of the only couple left in the family now. Yeah. So getting the pool table here was important. And having the pool table have a view, of the sunset and the water and all that stuff as you're shooting pool was important to us to get it here for us. The rest of the tiki room has been filling the, it's so big, filling the walls and getting it to 
feel like a tiki room. And I also, like, for me, a key element is having just lots of tikis. Like, I've had people gift me signs that say tiki room. I think I've got one in here. Most of the time I give, I re-gift them to somebody else. Uh, if you have to have a sign up saying tiki room, you're not a tiki room. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any tiki tiki room signs in your, in your esteem. No, I want this. Well, I heard the deep breath. Well, I, I think for, for Grant, when we were invited up here to his to his bar, I, I disagree with you. I, I think you focus on antiquities. You you have some amazing pieces that when you know everybody has their own style, you have a lowbrow, definite lowbrow style on, on Stevens and yours is the the museum quality pieces that you have. I might have a couple. Yo, you have more than a couple. And after we came here, I'm looking at this going, okay, Heather, you need to step your game up and start looking somewhere other. I, I need you to really dig deep and find some antiquities. So I, I do, I, I think you do have more of an anchor, and it's a very really quality style of, of pieces that you bring in. You know, you do have, listen, you do have a few clown tiki pieces, as I do. It's filler. You, but, have, to, you have to start with But them. when you come up the stairs and you look at truly what you have in here, you have some pieces that nobody else has. You have stuff that's not even in museums, which is really kind of a cool, you know, collection that each person kind of strives for. And I think for you and I, as, you know, we build our tiki bars, you know, and I'm, you know, we're in, we're in the midst of building, you know, our next house, which is going to have, the goal is five bars in our new house. He and it's did. just the wife and I, and I don't drink at all. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, it's to kind of, everybody has kind of what they want to put into it. And that's, that's the key part, because when we first went into Tiki, Heather, it used to really drive me crazy because she'd be online looking at this and she was so embarrassed on what we had. And I'm looking at this going, this isn't embarrassing. This is who we are and this is what we are. And this is all about just building what makes us happy. And if people aren't into it, then, then so be it. <laughs> so it's, it's building an escapism to create an atmosphere that is kind of, you know, the, this full otherworldly area that you can I invite people into and just have a great time. So, so the, the, that's where I'm at. That's why I'm here. <laughs> but the, the important point is I wish we had a word other than tiki to describe yes. who and what we are. Uh, because sometimes that can be very limiting. Yep. Um, I don't want to get in a theological battle about what is and isn't tiki, but um, but uh, it's important because um, we realized when Heidi and I were were putting the bar together, it was stuff that uh, the art and other things that made us happy. And if it wasn't strictly tiki, it fit with the it fit within the parameters. So art gallery, low bar art, monkey with fezes are requirements. And there's actually a clown. You, there's actually a painting with a clown on it in your room, in your bar, isn't there? Mm -hmm. uh, a monkey with fez clown. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, and a clown. So yeah, there's a clown, a clown with a monkey with fez. So uh, um, whispering to each other. Um, so well, you have to come come visit us to see it. Um, but it's what made us happy, and we weren't constrained by whether it is, it isn't tiki. It's whether or not it made us happy and fit within our predefined themes. And we have a larger theme because um, I, uh, I have a, a very modest collection of Pacific Northwest um, and uh, British Columbian um, native art. Uh, we have a, a nine foot tall uh, native totem pole upstairs in the house and in the bar itself. We have some uh, native carvings, uh, including by a very uh, influential uh, carver. And um, we integrated that. And that's why uh, those of you who saw uh, me this afternoon, I say from the PNW to the PNG, because we have Pacific Northwest art with Papua New Guinea art, with some Polynesian art, with our lowbrow art. Um, and so we, uh, so we, I've started to find it by a very clunky phrase, but Pan Pacific Pop Surrealism is our our overarching theme. I can't think of a better one, but it it fits. I like that, that. Is, I like that. that is who we are and, and what we do. And so 
we like it and it works for us. And if it makes you happy visiting us, all the better. So Grant, would you say that, um, like, well, how would you describe the theme of your bar? So my inspiration at the very beginning, and a lot of people are gonna hate these words, but was a Tommy Bahama bar almost. I found a, a house that been in a competition for interior designers in Florida yeah. that had a, an amazing bedroom in it and it had this ceiling on it with beams across it, the way we have the dark wood beams going across, yeah. with this ceiling, this thatch, that fan, and this color scheme for the walls. So the, t the taupe or tan walls and the dark green walls all come from that one design picture that we found online. But it was kind of a more refined tiki bar is what we were going for. So, so where Don brings up the, he's not the first person that's coming here, like you're kind of museum-ish. I don't know if that's what we were going for, but that's kind of where we've ended up for sure. And um, I do have some stuff with museum tags on it, so I can see where that comes in. And then like the kitchen slash bar was in that same design house. They had a office that had the exact same cabinet, same color scheme. And I just kind of melded it into the bar cabinets, melded into the rest of the tiki room and the ceiling. But I knew I wanted more of a refined space than a total thatch and all the bamboos and all the hut look. That yeah. wasn't really what I was going for at the beginning. Yeah, I got you. And the interesting thing, and not to speak for Don, but from what I understand with yours, originally you were going to do, the, it was going to be your the one tiki bar. And yeah, when, when we first started, it was just the the den in this house. It had a very good sized den. Yeah. It had built ins already set up. And when I looked at it, the we were going to have a smaller bar, maybe a two seat. Yeah. And then Heather ended up finding this amazing bar. We were sitting in, sitting watching TV, 8 o'clock at night. She hops on uh, Marketplace. And all of a sudden, she shows me this house. Um, this gal was kind of liquidating her parents' stuff out of their basement. This house was out of 1960. And I looked at that, and I'm like, text her. We'll be there now if she wants. But we went the next day. And that's kind of where it all started. That, that was the bones of it. We, we ended up with this full built bar that had amazing fun through the 60s. They were artists, and they had tons of like cartoon art all over the wall that they had created. And when we went and bought it, it she she wanted nothing for it, and I kept I wanted to give her more money because it was like I don't think you understand what you have right now. And yeah, yeah. It, it went from a two seat bar to a full six seat bar in there with the padded you know rail and everything. Yep, yep. And the great part on this room is that it already had the built ins on the back, and that's kind of where the start of it went. And that's where I thought we were done with it. But my main thing was on the styles, <clears throat> knowing and looking at other people's bars, mine was going to be kind of the, you know, like I said, the, the pirate, the, the world adventurer. This is the stuff that I've collected, you know, throughout our journeys, and we're just throwing it on the walls, from African to Papua New Guinea to, you know, uh, you know South America, everywhere. And there was no rules, yeah. you know, and it was all about the layers. And so on that first initial bar is all layers. Yeah. And that's I, I think for people when they're when they're building a bar, it's don't be afraid to look at what you want. I there because there's amazing ways to do it. There's the lowbrow way, there's a lot of amazing art out there. And then, you know, you, you've got, you know, in, in Grant's case here, there's you know, a lot of you know, full on museum pieces at times or you know, a, a whole setup of that. For me, I like the layers. Now, Heather, she likes like the specific, you know, uh, South Pacific and, and all yeah, of that yeah. side of it. And that's how we, all of a sudden we ended up with other bars. And then she just kept buying stuff. And, <laughs> and, 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 and now, I, apparently, we're picking them up. We're picking up more stuff on the way home tomorrow. So. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to get to layers. It's just trying to fill all this wall space. Has, right. has been a five-year challenge to fill up all this space. And, oh, yeah. and, like, but I'm slowly tightening things up. Like the war clubs just got tightened up to make room for the oceanic mask. And right. things are slowly tightening up. But 
And I've still got clam tiki in here because I can't fill all my walls yet. Uh, yeah, but and, that's okay. And then I wish I had that problem. every time I try and say, you know, it's good enough, Tina says, no, the walls aren't full enough, so she wants me to buy more stuff. Now, the interesting thing, now, Stephen, the interesting thing about your bar is that the bar was already in there. Yeah. So how did you work around that? So I wish I had the problem of too much wall space because... Mine was a plan bar. I, I, I always say that the home uh, bars, the home tiki bars, they're either um, organic, they spring from the things that you have and the things that you love and you keep building over time, or they're planned, although a, a bar is never done, as we all know. Mine's changed a lot in the last four years. But mine was a, a plan bar. And I also have a theory of constraints, or theory of opportunity maybe, is that when you have, like we do, we have a bar in the middle to answer your question, working around it. If I were to build another bar today, and my dream and is... I, and I know what type of bar that's going to be. Yes, yes. So if anybody has space to, uh, wants to get in on a bar, I'll tell you what the, my ideas are. Do you want to tell them now? Oh, sure. It's a, um, it's a, it's a Victorian room that used to house a tiki bar that has been defunct, so it is a haunted Victorian tiki bar. Right. A haunted with, Victorian. With, with shades, no, but this would be with shades of Scooby-Doo. Yeah. Because it's one of those places that we would have gotten away with it, but if it hadn't been for those darn kids, now that I'm older. So, yes. Um, so it, it's sort of that decrepit place. But anyway, that would yeah. be the next bar. But having uh, four blank walls or having this space, Grant, I mean, and on the one hand, the grass is always greener. I wish I had more space to put stuff because mine is a very uh, confined bar. On the other hand, the, my theory of constraints is, well, I have these constraints, and it was a lot easier than just four blank walls to work around it to figure out how to put things and where to put it. Um, so when I was done, I was very, very happy. But then I had the opposite problem when Grant is go, I wish I had more wall space to put more crap up there. You know, one thing with the layering and the, and the walls, the biggest compliment, and the ceilings, because I'm putting more and more stuff on my ceilings, the, co the biggest compliment is somebody that comes fairly often to your bar looks up and goes, that's new, and you're like, man, that's been there for a year or six months, you right? I love that when you have, you're layered and you're layered, and somebody's like, that's new and no that's been here forever and that's where the adventure starts happening i think that's a lot of us with our escapism and tiki bars it's all like right now we've got john the guitarist here first time ever he's exploring the walls right and and, and there's people that have been here jack second time being here and he's still walking around asking me questions about stuff that's on the wall that was still here last year he just never saw it because there's so much stuff so i think that's the fun is like when you go to Trader Sam's, a lot of us all have a little bit of Disney mixed into our rooms. Jungle Cruise right behind us, different stuff. When they come through and they see something for the first time, and they're like, "Oh, that's cool! What is that?" You know. And I love that when people start getting inquisitive and asking questions of the depth of the tinker. And that's always just so. So here's, here's so here's a question for uh, all three of you. It's like um, when it comes to the size of the space that you're that you're working with. Do you think? it's a hindrance to have a small space or to have a big space because the reason why i say that is like you you have a big tiki bar here so you have a lot of wall space that you got to cover up yeah. where if you have a smaller tiki bar like say stevens you don't have as much so it's easier to fill what do you guys think uh, the grass is always greener so i have the smaller tiki bar and i go damn i wish i had a big one but then again i have to change out the lights all it takes me is you know, 10 seconds in a step stool because I only have seven foot tall ceiling. So, you know, certain things are easier, certain things are harder. Ours is intimate and streamlined, and if you like that, great. My wife keeps buying stuff. <laughs> Do you so, drink? I don't drink much. <laughs> hey, Justin. But I do know that apparently we're stopping on the way home because she bought more six-band furniture. Yeah, and Ray it, has been hiding it that I just found it's, out. It's not hiding. It's in my living room. What? Yeah, like all, but the, all this But each stuff person, everybody, I mean, the tiki scene is an amazing oh, tiki scene. Yeah. If anybody had any questions right now, if they wanted to ask on how to build a tiki bar, I mean, by all means, reach out. Yeah, what you got? Yeah, let's... Um, <laughs> With an open space, you have the idea, you want to be something tiki. What is the first thing that you should think about when you're looking at a new space? Get a more specific idea. Yeah, okay. 
Well, seriously, I mean, either either inspired by what you have or what you want to buy, or by a theme or something that turns you on. But when you say something tiki, e get a better, uh, get a more not better, but more specific idea. That's the answer. I, I I would agree with that. Also, it if if you have a specific space, start to lay the walls out. Uh, I, I'll say that from per personal experience. I mean, I mean, we've tried multiple things, but when it comes down is once you once you get the walls laid out with whether it be thatching or you know some bamboo fencing. I mean, there, there's amazing you know stuff that you can get from Home Depot. That 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 rolled out bamboo. I mean, it's twenty bucks a roll, and it may be your first start, yep. but that will last a long time. The other key part. I will say is the backing behind it. I would try to block out the white wall as much as possible. I would not paint your walls black. Do not. <laughs> what I would do is I had a little trick is using the the uh, like lawn uh, vapor barrier. It's a rollout black. It's cheap. Put it just a couple staples on the wall behind it. It still breathes, but then then at that point, put your backing against it, and then you don't have any white bleed through on it. So just a kind of a little behind the scene. <laughs> you learned something. <laughs> you told him that. Yes. Oh. I, Heather told me everything what to say. Yes. Good job. I know when we built, we were building the shop, and this was planned to be a space up here no matter what, but... Like I said, I hadn't really got into tiki yet. And originally we were going to do sails and drop cloths so all the cans were okay because they're going to be backlights behind the drop cloths. Yeah. Switching to tiki all of a sudden and now having all these cans and having a bamboo ceiling with cans in the middle of it has been more of a challenge to make yeah. it work right. Investing in the Philips Hughes lights have made it amazing, but uh, that is something that I'd encourage small, big, whatever, Philips Hue lights change your atmosphere in a second boom 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 yep. super cool um the bamboo ceiling helps bring the ceiling down because we have taller ceilings here um but lots of time on the google box before i actually started before anything got hung on the ceiling or the color pattern was picked the bamboo style was picked we picked this was empty for quite a while before i actually made decisions and started buying stuff to start putting things in here and then tina just keeps filling the walls and um um, if you're working on a blank slate, two things. One, I actually got this out of the Smuggler's Cove book, of all places, uh, because we were renovating our house, so we were fortunate we could plan everything. So we were planning where everything went, in the kitchen, the bathroom. So we planned the tiki bar the same way. Unfortunately, when we moved in, the tiki bar was finished last for some reason, because Heidi and the contractor thought it was more important to have a finished master bath. But... Uh, <laughs> But I think this group would uh, agree that that might be misplaced priorities. Um, but in the Smuggler's Code book, they tell you what kind of, um, if you're working on a blank, what kind of walls to put in. So you don't have to put studs if you're hanging pictures or multiple yep. layers and things on it. So you want to get that kind of um, plasterboard, uh, modern plasterboard, uh, I forget the, the technical name of it, in there on the walls before you do anything. That way you can hang stuff, take stuff down, and you don't worry about... Can I find the studs? Is it going to carry the weight of heavy mass, heavy things like that? And the other is if you're working on a blank slate, think about the lighting early. We used art rails. I was trying to hide the lighting, and I said, screw it. I want an art gallery, so I'm going to expose the lighting. I'm going to go the opposite direction. But um, we were able to, our contractors help us since we were doing the house anew. We have an HVAC room next door, so most of the light switches to turn them on, they're internet enabled, but to turn them on and off, they're in the other room. So you don't see a lot of wires out there. So from a technical point, those, uh, along with what Don said, those would be my starting spaces. Oh, one thing I'd like to add is electrical is almost like the most complicated part of the whole thing. I only put one ceiling outlet in when I built this thing, and I'm probably going up in the attic here pretty soon and start adding more outlets here because it's just, I'm trying to add more and more lamps. But the other trick I've learned is I'm rewiring almost all of my lamps that are either in here or as I get new lamps, I'm rewiring them with Amazon's got the hemp covered electrical wire. 
it looks like jute rope. It blends right in with the ceiling. Yep. It looks like a native vine, and it disappears, and it takes all three seconds to cut the, cut the wire off of whatever you have, rewire it up with the new jute rope. And um, I've got like four 30 or 40 foot lengths in the back room that I'm slowly, and I can run farther with the jute rope and you don't even see it, and it blends in. So I'm slowly replacing anything that's lit up. And like the, the lights above the bar, I kind of can't see in the camera, but the, those are jute rope wrapped lights, right? And so that just helps blend it in and make it part of the room. Trying to hide all the wiring and everything like that's a constant battle. So that's just something to plan ahead. And, Oh, well, I, uh, I want to give my two cents, and I want to bring this bring this home. So, starting at the very beginning of this conversation, I was I was, I was really interested in like what's your anchor, what was your inspiration, and I really got to say, you're I think it, you're right. I mean, if you if you're gonna build a home tiki bar, you know, get you know the the more planning you could do ahead, the better. But I don't think that that should stop anyone from starting to build a home tiki no. bar because I'll tell you what, I mean, like I don't have a tiki bar, I have a tiki bedroom, and. Um, it's it, and it literally and if you wow. want to say how did it start it started with the tiki mug i had you know i, I bought a bamboo a little bamboo shelf to put my tiki mugs on and then it went from there so literally like your home tiki bar could start with like anything and that could be the inspiration and flexibility my original vision has changed once twice yeah it's my, gonna happen i've got my fourth and fifth versions in my head of where I want to go with this next, even though I'm getting full list. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do more stuff. It's always changing and like Heather and Don have kind of hinted at this too. When you acquire something, you, sometimes you have to shift your whole design. If you find the right piece, yes. like once you find it or you it, come, it falls into your lap or whatever happens, all of a sudden you're shifting gears and like, oh, this room's gonna go a different direction now or whatever. It's just flexibility through the process. But and it's a growing yep. experience. The whole so time. find, but I think what we're saying is find an object or objects or a theme that, to quote Marie Kondo, if anybody remembers her, that sparks joy, and and that'll get you that'll get you started, yeah, and then you just yeah. jump right into it. Well, well, like thinking of that, <laughs> you you know what I'm gonna what, what's in your bar? What's what changed things in your bar? Are you talking about a hyena? Yeah. <laughs> as, as Grant says, I asked Heather, I said, as a joke, I said, man, I really want a hyena. No. And because I saw the hyena at the Elks Lodge in Tacoma, and I went, as I'm looking at it, I'm like, I need a hyena. <laughs> and I don't know. Who doesn't? Two months later, she sends me this text at work. She says, I found your hyena. Here's the address. <laughs> So I go down there like a fly to a to a to a very stinky carcass. And sure enough, there is a hyena. A stuffed one. A stuffed hyena, but it's not just a hyena. It's a it's a leopard and a hyena fighting over a gazelle. Full size, full size. Full on. It is it is four foot by ten foot. And I'm looking at this lady, and I'm like, ma'am, I just came for the hyena. She says, I don't know where I'm going to fit the gazelle. She says, you have to have it all. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do with a leopard and a gazelle that's being half eaten. <laughs> Long story short, she wanted a certain amount for it. It came out of the uh, uh, Estacada Safari Club, which is, yeah. if everybody looks up the Estacada Safari Club, an yeah. amazing... Amazing club. Uh, it, it had so many pieces there. Yeah. Yes, sir. The, my part of that story is that the Safari Club was a place that, that all of like, the Portland Tiki people and the Tiki scene freaking loved and went, and it was like so popular. And the fact that you got a piece from it. Yes. Is, a very big piece. A very, like, it's, no, it's amazing. Like, it's like cause when that, that was one of the parts, like, Oh yeah. So, so I go to this lady's house. Heather sends me to this lady's house, and and I'm looking at this whole giant thing, and I'm like, speaking of changing direction of what we're doing, and I'm looking at this, and I said, "All right, ma'am, I know what you want, and I'm not trying to lowball you." I said, "I, I'll give you 500 bucks for the whole thing." Apparently, she was holding it for the original owner. She had sold the whole collection, and she's like, I just want it out of my garage. Can you get it in an hour? Wow. Okay, Whoa. yes. And I went and got a U-Haul, 
loaded this thing into it, and it didn't fit in the U-Haul. It stuck out the back. Uh, the, uh, yes, the which part was a good part. It was the uh, leopard part because I wanted the hyena for sure. And, and the funny thing is, is like, so you, you get it. And it doesn't fit in any of the tiki no. bars. So it actually lived out in your garage for a Lived while. in my garage for almost a year. I had it out there, and I'm like, okay, at some point, this is doing something. And I was going to tear it apart, and people kept, no, you need to no, you, you need to keep it together. You can't do that. You're going to break it apart. That's history. And I'm like, I just wanted a hyena. That's all I wanted. <laughs> yeah, and, and now you have a whole diorama. And the thing is, it's in the new bar. Yes. Yeah, the so, whole thing. So the new house... When we got in the new house, I looked at an area. I'm like, that damn thing is going in this house. And I learned how to tear apart a diorama and flip it sideways, get it through the door and put it back together. And now we have, I'll just throw it out there. One of our new, we're going to do five bars. One of them is a full African safari bar that has the hyena and leopard fighting over the gazelle. Yes, Grant, what do you got? Come on now. <laughs> he has an alligator. Yeah, yeah he ten, does have an alligator. I got a 10-foot Australian So, so the there you go. And to bring this all together, well, with you, Don, it started with a toilet seat and ended up with a hyena fighting yes. the gazelle. <laughs> it did. And now, now Heather has... Yes, honey. Yes, you, you've gotten great, great stuff. The garage is full. So we will have five bars in the new house. <laughs> so my, uh, my similar situation is we took the kids to Leavenworth to go sledding. Oh, no. Tina walked into a store, and there's a 10-foot all-staring saltwater crocodile they're trying to get a hold of. Uh-huh. Next thing you know, we're putting it in the truck and taking it home. Yep. So I'm like, wow. why, why do we need a crocodile, Tina? And she's like, we have to have it. Yes. So it just these things happen. It's just... Yeah, and, the, and, well, and with Steven, you have jellyfish in your uh, in your bar. We have stained glass jellyfish, uh, a stained glass artist from Reno who uh, does pieces for Burning Man, does uh, stained glass jellyfish, and so uh, it just uh, fit with, you know, we have a little bit of nautical because of the Pacific Ocean theme running throughout. So we have stained glass jellyfish, and in fact, and we have mid-century modern, although they're modern style, rocking chairs on the other side. So the rocking jellyfish lounge... Uh, neither implies that we're rocking nor that we love jellyfish, just that we have a nice jellyfish at one end and rocking chairs in the other. So there so, you go. So there you go. Well, I, I hope you all enjoyed this little roundtable discussion, and I honestly think there's going to be another one because this, this honestly can go on way longer. Yep. But um, Don keeps talking. So this is so this is so this. My wife told me what I need to say. Yes, dear. (laughs) All right. I I hope y'all. So I hope y'all enjoyed the uh, this little roundtable discussion. Now let's uh, let's listen to some music. Lushy, thanks for waiting. Thank you.